guys, and Sonny here with some more AFK Arena. Today we are back with our Graveborn team on 28-36. We do have the Wilder team and the Mauler team just ahead of us on 28-40. And the Light Bear team is actually, I believe, quite a little bit um, further up here, which as you can see there, 28-48. So as we've continued progression into 28, it has slowed down dramatically. But let's go ahead and take a look at our Graveborn team. As you can see here, we're starting to get a lot of plus 30 signature items. We have Isabella, we have um, Thorin, we have Pharrell already maxed out, we have Isolde already maxed out. Torn, uh, I'm still on the fence to build. A lot of people have said he is absolutely amazing. And also Oden, under the advisement of Javid, Javid said to build Oden, you will not regret it. He is absolutely phenomenal, especially when you get his furniture. So if we get a little bit more furniture for him, We'll go ahead and level up his signature item, getting it to a plus 30. In Torn, again, we're still a little bit on the fence. If we get a couple more copies of him, we can actually take him all the way up to Ascended if we get some food. So let's go ahead and we'll get into the summons. So as you can see here, we do have two cards, which was from our last push. So we'll start with some Graveborn Heroes here. Hopefully a copy of Torn would be nice, which it is a copy of Baden. Baden's a hero we might build in the future. He is agility-based and has a problem with survivability like a lot of agility heroes, which another copy of Pharrell, very, very nice there. We're starting to get our little tickets, but we do have elite hero soul stones. We have eight, so hopefully we can get some of the new heroes, which unfortunately, not the best pull. Got a couple maulers there. Did get a Vedans for some food. Got a Kalthar, which is pretty good. Warwick, Namora, don't really use very much, but overall, not too impressed with the stones there. We do have 51 rare stones, so a ton of heroes coming out for food for actually all of the accounts, or all of the factions. There's a couple more elites. We'll get a couple more, including a food for Viden. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the summons. 27 of our scrolls, 296, 24,000 diamonds. And of course, we do have 23 Stargazer cards here. Taylene is already at Mythic, so we're still trying to build her all the way to Ascended is our goal. So we will start with the two Stargazers here. Hopefully one or two copies of her, which nothing but a Wilder card on pull one, pull two. Hopefully a little bit luckier, which we hit another Wilder card. So no copies of Taylene this week. So unfortunately, that is where she is going to stay for now. But let's go ahead and we will get into these summons, which just a couple rare cards there. And this will do our for our companion points. So the regular summons. Still, we used all of our summons here to get a couple of copies of Damon. So it's going to reset pretty soon. There's our first elite card. Hopefully it is a copy of Torn, which it is a copy of Folks. Let's see what our wish list actually looks like before we go. So we do have Kalthar, which let's drop out Kalthar. We'll drop in Torn. That way we can possibly get a copy of Damon still looking, Oden, and Isold as well to continue to add stars. Finishing out heroes on the faction accounts. Since we are so far into the game, already in chapter 28, we have started to max out a majority of the heroes on the factions, which is always good to see. Which, there's our double pull. Skarath and Tassie. So even though we're getting a lot of really solid heroes, we are getting absolutely no Graveborn love. Just like we didn't get much on the Mauler account either. So a couple rares there. So this one is our elite pull. Which, just a single one, as long as it's a Graveborn. Another Skarath. Would have been perfect on the Mauler account to pull a couple more copies of him. All right, so that maxes out our slots. Let's go ahead and build a couple heroes here. There's Tassie and there's Skarath. Tassie almost completely maxed out as well, as you can see. The other copy of Namora did take her to Elite Plus as well. But let's get our last couple summons down. Fingers crossed we get a couple Graveborn. Which just a couple rares, not even a great board on that one. Final summon is an elite. Copy of Anoki. So some more Maulers. Got some crazy, crazy Mauler love today. And we still need the copy of Torn. 
It is Damon, very nice. Would definitely like to build him, especially on this account, which we should be able to grab these and do one more summon out of here, which we got 10 scrolls here and we got one more summon. Just thinking to finish out the week, the weekly today, which just a couple more rares. Final summon for an elite, which we got one off the bat. It is a copy of Oden. Very nice. I would definitely take a copy of Oden. And one more card, which will give us guaranteed Graveborn. So overall, got a lot of Graveborn. Another copy of Baden. Even though it was not really the particular Graveborns that we were looking for, um, still did add a couple Graveborns in there, including Damon. So here we'll add another star here to Tassie, taking her to four stars, so almost completely done. Namora, we finally got our second copy, and these are heroes that I use um, in the tower. These are the heroes that really do carry the tower. So Graveborn, Oden, we do have another star here to take him to two stars. Uh, Damon, we got double copies of there. And I am thinking, do we have no food at this time? So what I'm thinking though is to take, probably take Damon up. Because we only got a little bit of food. Right now we're just going to sit tight. Because essentially if I take Damon up to Legendary Plus, which I can, we don't have food to take him to Mythic, which would not make him very essential without the signature item. We have a lot of copies of Baden. Um, Kalthar, we don't have Torn. We could build as well. But again, we're still shy one copy of Torn uh, to go ahead and build him. So that's where we'll stay for right now. Let's go ahead and hit up the Oak Inn. Here we do have 21,000 pole coins. Looking at the heroes that we're looking for. Um, Baden and Damon are still in there, which I'm thinking to swap out Baden. Let's swap out Baden. We'll go with Torn. Just because people have said that Torn is absolutely amazing. Still waiting to see the footage and the videos on it. But we are going to go with him. So we have Oden. We have Baden in there. Or excuse me, we have Torn in there. We have Damon in there. And of course we have Taylene. So we got a couple summons here for some mythic furniture. So we got some legendary there. There's our first little red twinkle, which is a copy for Taylene again. It seems like with all of the accounts, I'm running a bunch of different accounts. Taylene is the hero I always get furniture for. Another red little twinkle there, which is a copy for Isabella. Definitely want to see her nine of nine and see just how powerful she is. We are getting there. I'm not sure that might give her five or six because I believe we do already have her three piece bonus. So almost have another red card there. Smart selection. We have all of our Greyborns up top. So that does give us our three piece set for Isabella. Very, very nice. So we have it for Pharrell. Isabella's three piece. Let's take a quick look at it. Void Barrage is now used as Isabella's normal attack. As we know, Void Barrage does a lot of damage. Um, so as her normal attack will be absolutely phenomenal, especially your 9 of 9. Um, deal, dealt, damage dealt by Void Barrage is increased by 15%. As we know, she already does a significant amount of damage. So being able to increase her damage will be crazy. Crazy, crazy strong. Same with Oden, very strong. So we have Nara's uh, three set. We have Isabella's three set. We have um, Pharrell's three set. And unfortunately, nobody else right now. So let's go ahead and look at the Graveborns. Again, I, I'm think, thinking we're going to go with Oden. Um, as much as I would like to get Torn to plus 30 just because I've never seen him. After forming his Bone Whip a total of three times, Torn gains 35 Life Leech and is immune to crowd control abilities. Then we do look at Oden. Damage dealt is equal to 120% of the original Void Lightning's ability, doing more damage. So essentially, each time an enemy uses their ultimate ability against Oden, he will retaliate with Void Lightning, doing 120% um, damage, which is very, very cool. So I think I'm gonna go with Oden, just because, like I said, Javid really, really re recommended Building him up. So you know what? We are going to go and we're going to build Oden. He is going to be our next hero. 
That way we can use him. I believe we'll be able to get him up to a plus 30 signature item or definitely really, really close. 26, 27, 28, 29, and there we go. So out of the last event, plus 30 signature item for Oden, maxing out his damage there. Just need a little bit more um, to max out his furniture to get a couple more pieces of furniture. So we have Isabella, we have um, Thorin, we have Pharrell, we have Oden, we have Isold, all at plus 30s at this point, which is absolutely phenomenal. Got a lot of furniture on these heroes. So let's go ahead and we'll get into the campaign push. 28-36 is where we're at right now. So let's go ahead and make some progression. So starting out on 28-36, we're going to stick with our core team comp, which of course is Grez and Thorin. We have Pharrell, we have Isabella, and we have Nara. Um, all of our backline already has their three set furniture bonuses, which is awesome. And still working on some plus 30 signature items, but very, very easy stage. This is where we were stuck last time. 14, almost 15 million damage from Isabella. Remember, Isabella's normal attacks with her furniture are now Void Barrage. So as you can see, when you look at her in the bottom, boom, that is all she casts, which is very, very powerful. Void Barrage, but once she hits a certain capacity, as you can see, she starts casting three Void Barrages on three different targets, making it even stronger, pumping out damage, 15 and a half million damage on that one. Absolutely crazy the amount of damage that she starts to put out with this Void Barrage. And also, remember, Nara does have her three set as well, meaning that if she gets the kill shot with the butchery ability, she is going to go ahead and fear everyone in the battle, which you'll see a couple times here, I'm sure. As you can see, Pharrell, boom, there's the kill on Brutus. Absolutely favorite shot. 16 and a half million damage there, but Nara's kill shot on Brutus, especially if it's through his shield, is just super satisfying. Here, Nara is going to go ahead and pick up Sophia. Nara on Sophia stops her from casting Spectral Disruption, making it very easy because that would have actually supercharged Belinda's attacks and her abilities, which this one looks pretty close because Nara cannot kill Golas with the ult because of the increased defense, but it looks like might be able to get this one down. We got Thorin up. Is he going to cheese it? Even though it's not a true Thorin cheese, but boom, there it is. Thorin will get it down this time. Very nice. Standing all by himself. Thorin gets it done on this one. 14 million damage. 9 million from Nara. So doing a significant amount of damage overall. 28-40. So two-thirds of the way through 28 at this point. Again, we're going to grab Sophia. Just for the simple fact, we do not want that Spectral Disruption, especially if you look at the team comp. Mahira would have had more attack, Verk would have had more attack, and Sophia would have had more attack if we were running a comp that didn't include Nara. Just got the kill shot on there for the Fear. Coming up to deal with Brutus, which usually if Nara is maxed out or has max energy, she can just finish him out. But very, very nice campaign stage there. 15.8, almost 16 million damage. Now on the next couple, take a look at the healing and the shielding this team does. It's pretty interesting to see. Here, Nara grabs Silvana. As you can see, we do have an enemy, Isabella, over there who's dealing with Grez's minions, actually. Um, she's trying to take those down with Void Barrage. Gets that one down, but there is the fear from Nara's ultimate ability. So very, very powerful. So looking at look at the healing and the shielding. 2 million, 1.5 million. So overall doing a ton of healing and a ton of shielding. Grez's minions dying does a lot of healing for him. Remember, because it is percentage based, that's where a lot of things in this game, when it comes to percentage based, such as the elder tree, um, that is what makes the elder tree so important. That's why I always stress building Izold now with his furniture, building Saurus with his furniture, the more essence that you can pull out of the elder tree because it is percentage based is it just absolutely grows substantially with power over time um because it is percentage based so as your heroes get stronger the percentages get higher and higher 
multiplication factor is the same, higher and higher, because you're leveling up the tree itself. So here we grab the little um, caster rate in the middle. What I also try to do with this team comp specifically is the taint ability that Thorin is putting on the target. I try to match it up with the hero that Nara is going to grab. Um, allows Nara and the bleed ability with the taint ability to kill heroes super, super fast. She can actually finish them off really fast here. 12 million, 11 million damage there. So Pharrell topping the damage on this one. 28-44. We're going to go ahead and put Nara in the middle because I know Savannah can kill off Isabella pretty quick, but overall, um, trying to lock down Pharrell is, is a priority. Trying to lock down the hero that does the crowd control ability makes a bigger, bigger difference. There was a perfectly placed Nara Fear with her ultimate ability, took out a target, feared the whole entire team, giving us those split two seconds that make it allow us to win the battle with RNG. So 13, 22 million damage there from Isabella overall, bringing us to 28-45. We're gonna keep Nara right in the middle. We'll grab Laika, as you can see, has the taint ability on her, has the bleed on Laika, done just like that. Brought up the next target for Isabella, or excuse me, for Nara. Nara grabbed another target. There's Nara's now on Angelo, boom, kill right there. Very nice. So Nara grabbed four targets in that one. 25 million damage from Isabella. Again, she is a hero that if left alone, she just absolutely decimates the entire enemy team. Nara's gonna grab Muriel just because again, the taint ability is on her. Very, very quick to take them down. And as you see, the Void Barrage is just flying everywhere. Seems if Isabella didn't alt, um, the, the Void Barrage is doing more damage. 22 million damage there. It seems like her alting actually reduces some of the damage that we'd be getting if we just continued to use Void Barrage, which a little disappointed there, but there's the Void Barrage. You can see how fast she attacked and look at it. Now it's starting to go to all three targets. Just such a fast, fast attack. Like I said, if, if I could turn off her alt, um, with Isabella, I would absolutely do it and just let her straight up cast the Void Barrage across the whole entire field. This one, we do have Athelia. So we're gonna pair, I'm thinking Pharrell with Athelia. Um, hopefully we can get a dodge. We should probably put Thorin down here. If we don't win it this time, we will put Thorin. Pharrell got absolutely destroyed. We could have played this one a lot better, but we might still be able to get it down because Isabella, as you can see right there, there's the fear. Athelia just ulted, but Isabella is still up. Look at the Void Barrage. Wow. Absolutely just crazy, crazy with the Void Barrage. Absolutely love it. Build Isabella, definitely a good choice. 28 million damage there. Wow. That she, she casts it so quick, so frequency. Um, it hits multiple targets now and just does so much damage. I cannot imagine having her 9 of 9 um, furniture just for the fact that Void Barrage will do 15% more damage. Yes, 15% damage increase with her furniture. The, the speed and velocity that she casted is just crazy. Um, as you can see, they're just absolutely destroying targets, rocking the damage meter. 17 million damage there, 10 million from Nara, pushing us all the way to 28-50. This one we're gonna grab Arden. Arden crowd control is so very fast, plus his shield. Gorvo is very, very difficult to deal with. I am super stoked on the Wilder account to uh, build Gorvo. Seems like he is really, really difficult to deal with. Right there, we got the kill on Iran. Again, another Gorvo stun. Goalless, we're not gonna be able to kill. This is gonna be a close one, guys. It, it's very, very hard to take down Gorvo, especially look at the amount of stuns. But there it is, boom, kill shot. Nara finishes off the Ninja Turtle just like that. 26 million damage from Isabella. Wow, absolutely awesome. 28-51. Again, we're gonna grab Arden. Nara versus Arden, always, always a good choice. 
Um, Nara versus Silvana is a good choice. Nara versus especially squishy targets, um, such as Belinda does really, really well. Sophia, so the Spectral Disruption does not get cast, makes a big difference as well. Nara overall, with her furniture, especially being able to add the crowd control aspect to it, just increased her survivability by quite a bit, but also her utility now that she has that fear aspect. Again, we have Nara up top, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab, um, I'm thinking Arden on this one, but we're gonna have to swap out Grez. We tried this one a lot and Grez is not doing it. We're gonna bring in Izold. Izold we built, he has a plus 30 signature item right now. So definitely want to see, which unfortunately he just got destroyed there from Ira. But we might still be able to get this one down. I definitely want to give Izold a couple turns. Grez continues to die. That, that's my biggest, I have him five star. Um, Grez even maxed out tier two gear dies and dies consistently over and over and over. I tried this a lot with Grez, couldn't get him to live. Unfortunately, Izold died just as fast as Grez did. I'm hoping that we can get him to scale a little bit. Let's go ahead and we'll grab the Spider Queen on this one, again, with the crowd control. So Izold in the top, remember, he is warrior. He is not tank, but there is his heal. He gets his heal off, usually if he can scale. Look at the healing, there he is almost back to full hit points again. If he can scale, if he can alt, um, you cannot destroy him. He is so, so strong. Looking at the damage here, look at the damage, 12 million, excuse me, the healing for Izold, 12 million healing. Solo tank, 12 million healing on that. Absolutely crazy. Like I said, with him being a scaling hero, if you can keep him up long enough to live, this one we swapped in Oden. Oden, again, is a scaling hero. Once he opens up all three eyes, super ultra powerful because he nullifies ultimate abilities for heroes. He single-handedly can lock down an entire team of heroes from alting, which is crazy because his energy regen and he attacks so fast. Multiple targets even here. Does quite a bit of damage too. Almost 9 million damage on that one. Bringing us to 28-58. Again, we're gonna stick with this team. We're gonna swap Oden to the bottom. Picking up Arden in the middle, but there we go. So, oh, Izo just got his alt off right when he died, unfortunately. With his furniture bonus, I know it's gonna make a big, big difference which I'm super stoked about, but I, I definitely want to use him. I love how he is built. This one might be, yep, we got this one down. I thought it was going to be a defeat there for a minute, but we did get this one finished, bringing us to our next boss stage. Look at that, 28-56. If we can get this one down, we have officially taken the lead, the Graveborn team, which there we go. We got Sophia on the back, got a Izold's taking a lot of damage in the bottom, but Sophia, we need to get down. There's the kill shot. Didn't get it, but there is the alt. Izold just ulted, meaning he is full health. Look at that, full health again. I, or excuse me, um, not Izold. Izold just took care of Shamira. Boom, got the alt. Look at that. Or I, Izold. Alted and Oden took care of Shamira, locking her out. No alts cast by Shamira. Oden absolutely destroying it. I love this team combination. This is this is crazy. I I love the Izold combination, especially with Oden. Um, even looking at the heroes here. So the haste that he has, the displacement, putting everyone together. There we go. Just Alted on Viden, so Viden could not cast his ultimate ability. Oden locking them down again from casting the ultimates. Such a hugely, hugely underrated hero. Again, Javid wanted me to build him. Here he is completely built. Um, we just need his furniture because furniture is going to increase his damage and his damage reduction, which there we go. We took the lead, officially got further than the Light Bear account. So the, the Graveborn did it. They are officially in first place. 
And of course, this is a super, super hard stage to compete, 28-58. Um, let's see if we can do a Thorn Cheese here. Probably not. Very, very tough, but look at that, 28-58. Super stoked we got this far, absolutely phenomenal. Anytime that you're running, as you can see, the enemy team comp, um, Baden with Nemitsu. If you don't have a ton of damage, a ton of burst damage, between the totems and the adds, you will never be able to get them down. You, you cannot kill them fast enough um, as they continue to pop up here. Let's go ahead and swap our tanks, see if maybe it'll help a little bit. Again, we just need Izold to go ahead and alt. Um, Oden to keep the heroes locked down, which that one we got absolutely destroyed. I'm hoping we can get this one down. I would love to finish out 28 and actually get into 29. Even look at the displacement. So the displacement there, so Oden displaced Sophia, resulting in Sophia unable to cast the Spectral Disruption. In the meantime, Nara picked up um, Nemesu on the enemy side. So Oden took out Sophia right off the bat with the Spectral Disruption. As you can see, there she goes. She gets teleported, dropped right on some other heroes right in the middle. We just need a little bit more survivability. Overall, super impressed by Oden. Such a cool, cool hero. So guys, that will do it for the Graveborns tonight. 28-58, just ahead of the, of the um, Light Bearers. You, you see them right there. So we passed a ton of stages. We took the lead for the faction accounts. Graveborn with Izold and Oden have taken the lead. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Very, very stoked to see Oden and how well he does. Need Izold's furniture. And as always, thank you guys for watching.